Hey, hey, hey. Nigerian XJW speaks here. Good evening. I hope you are doing well. If it's your first time here, welcome. I am not going to jump straight into my name today because if you've watched any of my previous videos, you're going to hear a different name to what you're going to hear right now because it's been quite a week for me. Um, so earlier this week, I took some time off. Uh, I just got into productive mode. This story that you didn't ask for. But essentially, I reconnected with my Nigerian name, which has kind of been lost for the last 12 years. Since I moved to the UK, it hasn't been used. And I've been thinking about it for a few years. And with everything that's been happening in the last few months, it just felt like the absolute right time to bring it back, to reconnect with it. So hello, my name is Chigo. And it's Nigerian XJW Speaks. So, okay, now we got that out of the way. I hope everyone's doing well. I hope you're having a good week. Actually, before I jump into it, there is something I wanted to show you guys from my son. I wanted to give you an update because I shared this with you before. So I want to show you this. Come take a look. So folks, I wanted to get you out here to show you this plant that we looked at maybe like a few weeks ago that my son planted. And he's now got <laughs> two bits of uh, bean broad beans i think on here which i'm so proud of him do you want to say something baby oh my goodness this is quite thick as well although so, yeah come, come closer so it's so it started in a tub but then it got too big so we planted it out here it, you did get just the seed didn't, didn't you Mm -hmm. and you started it off in your bedroom and then we got it out here and look what you've done so that's amazing i was just gonna say this one is seems to be under attack from some plants so if you guys know anything that can help this let me know so we can stop it and keep this going but i'm so proud of him he's done so well so we might actually get this one off today mm -hmm. and eat it yeah Ah, that'd be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's his excited voice. All right, I just wanted to show you guys that. Right, back to the video. Okay, welcome back. That's great, right? I'm so proud of him. I'm so proud of him. Okay, so what you're here for, why you clicked on this video, my thoughts on Jehovah's Witnesses right now. That is a, a question I have been asked before. Um, a lot of the time when it sounds like I am just giving a lot of criticism as someone that has left and I just wanted to clarify what my thoughts are and just maybe share some of the thoughts that I have. Now, you may or may not know this, but I have family that is in, you know, um, my entire nuclear family. So my, my, my parents are in there. My brother and sister are still in the religion. Uh, I have extended family members that are in there as well. And so I have got skin in the game, shall we say. I have got skin in the game. And so what do I think right now? And that answer for me wasn't straightforward. And I have to factor in who are we asking about? Because that depends on what the ranking of that person is in the religion. It's going to determine how I feel about them. And so I'm going to start from the youngest, the kids, the kids that are born into this religion like I was like my mom was you know the children now children they are at the mercy of their parents their guardians you know they completely depend on them for everything children are socialized raised conditioned in some way to believe that their parents are right that their parents mean well and most of the time it serves them well you know a parent that is teaching them to not touch something hot or you know don't don't run into the road you know they, they, they mean well and most parents do and so you have a situation with a religion that is um using that power dynamic to have these children be exposed right to the teaching of the religion day in day out week in week out there is no break you know when i was growing up we had, of course, the examining the scriptures daily, which is first thing in the morning. It was around 5, 6 a.m. If we're lucky, 7 a.m. That would go through that in the morning. So sleepy-eyed kids waking up, that was how we started our day. 
So you're starting with that in the morning. On the Monday, so let's start in with the Monday. On the Monday evening, we are preparing for the um, book study, which was on the Tuesday. So we're preparing on Monday. Come Tuesday, of course, you have the text every single morning. So you have that on Tuesday morning as well. And then you have the book study on the Tuesday. And then on the Wednesday, midweek service, whatever you have going on. On Thursday, you prepare for the meeting that you're going to have on Friday. On Friday, you have the meeting. On Friday, at some point, or maybe along with the Thursday, you're preparing for what you're going to say when you go door to door to preach on the Saturday. Because if you were a child like myself, that you had school from Monday to Friday, Saturday was when you went out to preach door to door mostly and so you would do that and then saturday evening if you haven't already done it you're preparing for the meeting that you're going to have on sunday and so the reason i go through that is that it's day in day out it's constant there is power in repetition and so when the mind of a child that is conditioned to think that adults know what's right, especially when it's their parents and their guardians, the people who hopefully they know care about them. And they're, and they're plugging this in day in, day out, and they're not teaching it as this is just what I think. They're teaching it as this is, this is the truth. You know, your life literally depends on it. You know, for, for, for me personally, that was one of the reasons that I had to think about my son you know do I want him being exposed to this do I want him his young mind in a place where he's going to be told these things that there is absolutely no proof for that you think so is not a good enough reason do I want him in a position where he's going to be hearing all this day in day out not as an opinion not as we think so but your life depends on it. So how do I feel about the children? I feel, I, 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 I don't know how else to put this, but I feel sorry for them. Just like I would feel sorry for the child that I was, that that's what life was. Because in addition to the nonstop routine, life as a Jehovah's Witness kid can be very isolated. You are deliberately asked to be isolated in terms of friendships. You don't have friends that are not in the religion. You are judging people. You know, that is such a heavy burden for a child to carry, to be looking at everyone else and seeing them as destined for death and just the worst things in the world that you can think of people, just walking around thinking of people like that, that is a burden for a child to carry. And then the fear of you potentially not quite making the cut in this group that's supposed to be saved and finding yourself on the other side. That is a fear that I have heard a lot of people talk about this. The fear of being struck down from heaven dead either through Armageddon when it comes, or like in my case, doing something and worrying that I could be struck down right now. So I I can't help it or feel anything but sorry for children who are raised in this religion and all this stuff that comes with them. So that's it. That's, that's all I got for them. Yeah, I just feel sorry. Um, on to teens. Um, the thing that stands out for me when it comes to teens, um, I mean, in terms of freedom and being able to act different or do different, it's still a bit limited, especially if you have a teenager that's still living at home um, where they are not self-sufficient. But at that point, you have some thinking ability that's coming in. But if it's anything like I grew up, you do not have the freedom to even verbalize it never mind act on it so that lack of freedom that lack of freedom again i have nothing against them i have nothing against them a teenager who has been raised in and they probably have these ideas that they're thinking about but they can't say it they can't they can't act on it because there's a certain level of questioning that will get you to be watched you know if you're asking softball questions 
and taking whatever answers that are being given to you, whether they're half baked or not. You know, that's fine. But if you start asking, you know, deep questions and start researching stuff outside the approved literature, so the watch our publications, you could get in trouble for that. So I share this solidarity with them um, with this sort of lack of freedom. When I was a teenager, it wasn't even a possibility that I would leave because it's, it's just not. The thought of being able to leave, it was just an impossibility because it was the worst thing you could do, leaving. Where would you go? You know, and so my heart goes out to them. Now, it gets a little bit more complicated when we get to um, adults who uh, don't have any sort of ranking or what, what they call privileges. Adults who are just part of part of it. And you get a, a lot of nice people in this group. So people that are just publishers you know they're not trying to go for any uh position they are just publishers doing what they can ticking along you get a lot of lovely people in this group now depending on whether they've come in as adults or if they've come in as children the one thing that runs through the one thread that runs through because i was looking at this beforehand and how do people get into what i now consider a, a cult you know, a lot of the time there's an imbalance of power and that might not always look the way you think it does. You know, it's not just that they're holding something over you, pardon me, um, or in a position of authority. You know, those are certainly uh, things. But cases like where you have an, an adult that's going through a difficult time and these people show up that promise to give you that thing that you're looking for, like, you know, um, my dad, who was going through a really difficult time, you know, his, he'd, he'd gone through some things in his life. He wasn't born into it. And, and you know, they showed up. Um, I, I mean, this is no secret, by the way. They are quite open about this. They're quite open about targeting people when they're going through a difficult time and promising them things that they absolutely have no way of knowing they can deliver. You know, people that have just lost someone going there and promising them that they're going to see their dead loved ones again. You know, and people that are in dire straits, in poverty, like they're currently doing in parts of South America, Africa, going to these people who life is difficult for and going there and promising them that they're going to live in this world where they're going to have everything they've ever wanted and they have absolutely no way of knowing that they can deliver on that. That's part of the imbalance of power. And so when you dangle something like that in front of someone that they really want, I, I, um, how, how, how do I put this? You know, so it's, it's a mixed bag. On the one hand, I can, I can feel for them, but what, what I can say is if you're an adult and, and the difficult time passes, which I hope it passes, you know, at some point, you've got to apply some critical thinking. Yes, there is potentially, um, you know, if you have family in, of course, that is something to consider. But I'm talking about people that are all in, you know, mentally, physically, because we know that right now there are people who are going through the motions, they're at the meetings, they're doing the activities that they're meant to be doing, but mentally they know it's, it's BS. So I'm talking about people who are physically in, mentally in. At what point? Do you start questioning things? You know, the last video I made, I think there was a comment. Um, see the live stream. See the live stream we had on Sunday, which was which was so great. It was a great live stream. Which, by by the way, um, if you were subscribed to me, you would know this. So on the last Sunday of every month, we have a live stream. Um, Sunday, 9 p.m. UK time. And we chat about the month and catch up on anything we want to catch up on. So if you want to know where, when the next one is, subscribe, 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 subscribe. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So it came up that, you know, um, do we think that with everything that's happening right now, there'll be a, little, a, a bit more critical thinking going on with the members? And you know what? I genuinely hope so. I genuinely hope so. Because for me personally, the last few months, you know, having 
I don't want to say time because trust me, I've not had any more time. <laughs> I have not had any more time. I've continued working. I just have to look after my son on top of it. So no, I have not been less busy. But, you know, the events of the last few months, I've created, it's created a lot of thinking points for me. So I really hope so. I really hope so, especially events um, from the Australian Royal Commission to the documentaries that have been out. I mean, there's been the Oxygen documentary, there's been the Leah Remini documentary, uh, was that last year? So at some point, I am looking at them and going, are you thinking about this? Are you thinking this through? Are you asking questions? What other situation would you accept the things that you've been told just like that, like you do with this religion? What about when they're changing doctrine? Are you giving that some thought? So I am giving them the side eye. Yeah, not in a blaming sort of way, but in a kind of, you know, think, think about this kind of way and ask those questions. Wherever you end up with that, that's absolutely fine. But provided you've given it thought in a non-presumptive way, because the search for truth needs to come, I think, with an open mind. You cannot go into a search already deciding what the outcome is going to be. You know, you have to be prepared to follow the evidence whereby it leads. And as long as you've done that, honestly, then, you know, what your conclusion is, is what it is. But have you done that? That's what I'm thinking. Okay, the next group of people, the men in positions. So these are ministerial servants, elders up, you know, Bethelites, those folks who, uh, I don't know. It's, it's like a combination of the imbalance of power probably starting out, but what we have on that point, they have become completely different people. It's like when the religion says that they're going to give you a new personality, you're going to put on a new personality. You're going to be having divine teaching, which is one of the traits of brainwashing. And I know that word get th gets thrown around a lot, probably more times than it should. But one of the uh, some of the key traits of that, you need to have the imbalance of power, first of all. There is a, a tendency for people to get a new personality that is not necessarily of their own free will and you have a re-education that goes on and boy do they re-educate you they call it godly education divine teaching the real education you know everything else that's out there is not quite up to scratch i have a video on education that i'll try and link somewhere so it's a combination of that because there's no way i think you can get to a point where Hopefully, a formerly decent human being will be in situations, I'm going to use the worst example, of course, where they're presiding a case where a child is reporting being abused and it's, it's swept under the carpet, where you're prepared to punish people for acting on medical advice that saves their lives you know potentially some of those kids that we talked about you know so I, I guess I have a little less sympathy because they are part of the system that's causing harm unfortunately I mean my own my father and my brother it's so hard to say would sort of be in this category um I don't know there's a little bit less sympathy purely because they are now you know part of the system that potentially causes harm now don't get me wrong it doesn't not not every elder you know gets a chance to preside in such cases so perhaps not every single one of them but there is that potential there is that point where you get to i am prepared to do whatever it takes to uphold the party line to uphold what the governing body say and that's destructive and i see that behavior as destructive and if there was a calling to justice, uh, there should be, you know, to whatever extent, you know, they have had an input. So it was nice to see some elders being called forward during the Australian Royal Commission to sort of explain themselves, explain why they thought it was OK to have altogether a thousand and six accused perpetrators that documented that wasn't reported. They had to come forward to sort of explain 
the rationale behind that, you know, I have an extreme example in my head, but I'm not going to go there. But that's where I feel a lot of the what will come across as negative talk for me it's purely targeted at the leadership so i'm talking governing body and their helpers because that's where the box ups you know these are the people that literally make the rules these are the people that claim to be spirit directed whatever semantics they're playing these days um, where they've gone we, we we're not inspired but we're directed we're used they're playing word games. You have to know when you get to that point, whether it's BS or not. And I know this, this is something that I've wondered before, like, do they buy into it? But the more I think about it, I mean, at what point do you not realize that this, this directive that you're meant to be given as you're led by Holy Spirit that's impacting the lives of millions and millions of people when you're deciding to sell off kingdom halls that groups, congregations of people have put blood, sweat and tears into to build it and maintain it and then you show up and have them sell it and the proceeds go to you. You know, doing stuff like this at some point, right, knowing fully well that you don't have any sort of direct communication but you're claiming to do that so basically for me they are the real culpable ones and so when it comes across like and being negative the that that's where the bulk of it is going to it's directed straight at them you know and then to a smaller extent the men in positions in the congregations who are helping to execute that Because they are the men that are, you know, making it actually happen and have the effects that it has. And so I I don't want anybody to get it twisted. Uh, I I, I hope that sort of breakdown helps. So a lot of the time I'm sure I've said this, that I don't necessarily have anything against the everyday witness. Certainly not the children that are born into it. Certainly not the teens who are who don't really have the freedom to do anything else. I know what it was like. Um, Even also not towards the rank and file everyday adult who happens to be there because they were promised something and there was that imbalance of power um they were in a desperate position and the need for hope the need to hear of something better you know got them in there and they've just settled in they're not trying to get any position they're just they're just doing their bit you know yes do some research think about it but i don't have anything against them it's those people that are having either creating the policies that cause harm or implementing those policies in the day-to-day to to make them have the effects that they do. That's where a lot of the stuff is directed to. So it's like uh, someone was saying as well during the live stream, whether, you know, hoping that there wouldn't be, that they wouldn't be allowed to go back door to door when the pandemic is over. And I was saying I'm hesitant about that about taking away such freedoms from people and i think a better approach would be for the people that are going to to be informed to be educated so that when they show up at your door most of the time meaning well you you can you have the information to challenge what you're being told to counteract that so that even when you're in that difficult position which we all find ourselves in at some point you're not sucked into stuff like that you know you're able to see the bs for what it is and I think that's a better approach for people to wake up to it rather than being forced to to, to stop what they've been convinced is needed to literally save their lives you know they believe that they are going door to door to save your lives and that if they don't the blood of the people is in their hands which I have flashbacks this is this I think it's in Ezekiel I don't know the, the, the verse or the chapter now where um, Jehovah is apparently saying to Ezekiel that if he if he doesn't go and warn people, they will die for their sins. But he is going to ask for the blood from Ezekiel's hands. And someone like my dad genuinely held that to heart. Uh, for me, I don't know how else to explain why that was a scripture he quoted lots and lots and lots of times. Because he was the service overseer at some point. And, you know, just reminding people to go out door to door. So I don't, I don't think it's... 
a good approach to force people to stop doing something that they think their life depends on that. But, you know, education, education all around and maintaining critical thinking in as many situations as possible. So these things can be challenged. So when they come round, so they can be questioned. And for the children and the teens, well, there's hope, you know, there is hope to grow up and think about things and be brave enough to follow the evidence where it leads and follow the research. So I'm going to leave it there. This video has been much longer than I thought it was going to be. Um, but I hope you found it useful. I hope it probably answers some questions that I've had and that it all makes sense. So subscribe if you haven't. Share the video as well. If you think someone would benefit from um, hearing your thinking and the thought process, by all means, share it with them. I would be grateful. The more sharing and liking and commenting we have, the more people see them. So I want to hear your comments as well. I want to hear your thoughts. What do you guys think now? If you're someone that has left, what are your thoughts on the witnesses? Is it a layered approach sort of depending on who or is this one sort of blanket opinion? There is no wrong or right answer. We all have the rights to our opinions and what we think <laughs> okay i'm gonna leave it there have a fantastic rest of the week everyone i'm gonna go and edit this now i'm also gonna place some videos here for you to watch next because why not you're here you might as well see some more stuff that we've talked about and i'll speak to you soon take care folks bye